Albinism is a genetic condition. It occurs throughout nature, in the plant and animal kingdoms, and in every racial and ethnic group of people. The hallmark characteristic of albinism is whiteness, a dramatic lack of color in both hair and skin. Most people have heard the term albino sometime in their lives, yet few know what it really means to be a person born with albinism. One person in 20,000 in the United States has some type of albinism. Albinism, the people, the challenge. Albinism is a genetic abnormality of melanin formation. Melanin is a pigment that occurs in the skin and the hair and the eyes. And in albinism, the amount of melanin that forms in those tissues is reduced or is absent. And that leads to the changes, the ocular changes of albinism and the skin changes, the hypopigmentation of the skin. In this program, we will introduce you to people with albinism, men, women, and children, who face many challenges as they go through life. These challenges include a visual impairment that cannot be corrected to normal, sensitivity to sunlight and sunburn, and coping with looking different. When you're pregnant with a child for nine months, you have certain anticipations about that child. That's what helps you attach to the child. And when the child is born, and it seems that there's a possibility that what you could do and, and could experience with this child is different, you need to acknowledge that in an emotional way and grieve it and set it aside and build a new dream that fits that child that you can run with. The first time that we enrolled Cameron in public education was quite a scary experience for us because we didn't know what to expect. We did not not have any prior experience with, his, with children with low vision in the school system, so we didn't know uh, what the school's abilities were, or what their um, availability was to, um, to tend to his individual needs. And Cameron will be in a normal school, quote unquote, because he does have average abilities. He is in no, no way, except for his vision, needs adaptive instruction. He does not need a low IQ type of instruction. Um, he is not considered special day class. He does not have behavior problems. He does an excellent job in the classroom, and except for, as I keep mentioning, his visual field, he functions perfectly. Long before the child enters school, parents begin working with early intervention specialists. Early intervention is really important for children with albinism. It gives them just kind of a head start. They can look for just subtle subtle areas maybe where the child has deficits and work with them before they get to school. And often if they do that, they'll find that by um, the time they reach school age, if the child has been worked with on, on, on these problem areas, that they'll be at the same level as other kids or even ahead of them and it gives them a bit of advantage. When Bianca came to school, she has an IEP, which is an individualized education plan, um, which she has because she qualifies under Other Health Impaired. What this document has is a lot of the information that we need so that we know where, she, where her standing is and what her learning is like. How do I get the date to come up? Well, first of all, you want to... Bianca's elective this year is that she's a technology TA, so she helps in the, techno in the computer lab working with students, and she works with teachers. She helps teachers problem-solve some of their problems as well. And you let it go, and then your date's right where you want it. I think one of the most important things is to stay one step ahead of the game, which means starting in uh, about May or June before the school closes, to get a good start on September. The school needs advance notice that they're having a child in the class that's a little different. They need to know, for instance, if the child's going to need large print books, they have to order a months in advance or you end up waiting till December and the child falls behind. So things that are... Important. It's important to meet with all the staff, all the separate teachers, if there's a separate music teacher, meet with the school nurse, know the principal and the teacher and the um, any staff that's going to be working with your child because those are the pitfalls when you come across um, an adult that's working with the child that is unaware of their vision, their low vision. So it can't be D. Try C. Try C. 
seat. Social issues are often the most difficult to deal with in albinism. These issues are different at each stage of life. As children grow, they need to understand what albinism means, why they look different, and how to explain their condition to others. As they enter school, children will be subjected to teasing and name-calling because of their appearance. I think junior high was probably the most traumatic thing for my daughter, the older one of my children. Um, there were times when the teasing was so severe that um, I could just hold her and cry with her. I think one of the most important things you can do as a parent is to educate everybody who's going to be on, in contact with your child on a regular basis, and that includes the other children. Um, it means going into the classroom and, and introducing yourself and explaining what albinism is to the children and the teacher and letting the kids ask questions. They have a lot of questions and their own parents are usually unable to give them the answers. Children with albinism are at risk of becoming socially isolated because the condition is often misunderstood. Myths surrounding albinism are abundant. They exist in every culture. Perhaps the most common is the myth of red eyes. People with albinism do not have red eyes. They usually have blue or gray eyes, which might appear reddish or violet in certain types of light. Another common misconception is the cause of albinism. Most types of albinism are inherited through recessive genes carried by both parents. Physicians and genetic counselors can help families understand the genetics of albinism. Usually children with albinism are born to parents with normal color for their ethnic backgrounds. This is similar to the inheritance pattern of blue eyes and curly hair. Albinism affects all family members, including siblings, spouses, and children. Spouses often have additional responsibilities, as do children. It is important that the impact of albinism can be discussed freely in a family. Oh yeah, I'm a bit of a backseat driver. Mm -hmm. I can't even see where we're going but I knew what fast feels like. Mom's definitely had to hook up on the rides and, and um, just going out and, and being helped out in the world, but um, I don't know, like I've learned a lot just from being around her, just from walking down the street. You know, um, something that I always remember is like soccer games and um, school concerts. My mom would be there, usually in the front somewhere with her monocular watching. It's really, it's just, it's nice to know that she's there. Discrimination based on color is common in our culture. To have albinism in a family and community of color is a tremendous challenge to all involved. He'd walk out, he had to have shades on all the time. We'd put shades on, put him out, he'd walk out with his hands behind him. And he would be so sweet, he just smiled all the time, just like he does now. He smiled. I carried him to some kind of festival. And um, I had him up around my neck, and there were two policemen there. And they were trying to harass me and him, you know. They said, uh, somebody's crossed the line. Somebody's crossed the line. And uh, I didn't say nothing at first. But a little while afterwards, they kept following us around. See, I told you they crossed the line. And I turned around and faced him. I said, wait a minute. I said, nobody crossed the line. Now, uh, he said, well, he's half white. I said, no, he's not. I said, he's black, just like I am. He had a shell. And sometimes it was hard to get into that shell. You know, it was like, uh, he wouldn't talk about things. I'd asked him, and he wouldn't talk. <laughs> So it, it was like I had to do go roundabout ways of uh, sitting up and talking to him and making him understand, hey, baby, it's okay, you know. Uh, people just, it's not you. It's other people.
The low vision associated with albinism is a serious concern. It is essential to have a knowledgeable optometrist or ophthalmologist for vision care, starting at a very young age. If one wants to talk about what happens to the vision in a patient with albinism, the best thing to say is that detailed vision is lost so that small resolution type targets are difficult to see, but the patient has no appreciation that this has occurred. There is no sense of blur, and interestingly enough, there's no sense of movement, even though the eyes have a profound movement back and forth called nystagmus. One of the nice things that can be said about all forms of albinism is that the worst the vision can ever be is on the first day of life. And as the nystagmus gets better, the vision only improves. The patient with albinism requires routine reevaluation so that the spectacles and contact lenses are constantly brought up to date. And once again, I want to emphasize the importance of an ultraviolet filter being placed in lenses early in life and continuously in all forms of glasses and contact lenses to protect the patient with albinism from the damaging sun rays to the lens and retina. People with albinism have developed many ways to compensate for their low vision. What strikes me in this particular store is the um, fluorescent lights. There's so many fluorescent lights on the ceiling. The lights are very clear, they're very distinct, and they reflect in the linoleum. But that is about all that I see clearly. The term functional vision refers to the ability to use all sensory clues in order to accomplish a task or to function in a particular setting. Hi. Hi. You know, I, could, you, could you tell me where the dental floss is? Dental floss is all the way back against that wall, when you right I across from the back right. of the wall. How I find things is to go to the shelf where I think they are, and then I look for them one product at a time. Uh, and I usually scan across, but sometimes I scan up and down. A monocular is a tool used to enhance functional vision. I'm looking for 1124 Solano Avenue and looking across the street, I can only see large letters. I can't see the small numbers, but if I take my monocular, I'll be able to find, and there is 1124 right there. The way I've handled um, driving is that my son, uh, when he got his license at 16, he and I bought a car together. I paid a thousand, she paid a thousand in exchange. Um, I take her where she wants to go. I get to go around, I get to hang out with my friends, and I take my mom to the BART station, to the store, when, she, when there's an emergency. Many people have chosen to use bioptic glasses for driving. These glasses require special training, and the laws for their use vary from state to state. Some individuals do not have the visual acuity to use bioptics. One drives primarily with the normal or carrier lenses, a small telescope drilled into one or both lenses is used for spotting important signs or situations. Ocular albinism affects primarily the eyes. It causes a visual impairment similar to other types of albinism. We didn't get a, a diagnosis until Bryce was actually uh, uh, three and a half because they told us it was just nystagmus it wasn't a portent of anything necessarily it may go away um, and we realized his vision was not getting better an issue of vital importance to all persons with albinism is sun protection damage from ultraviolet rays of the sun causes many people to have problems with skin cancer in adulthood Today, I have a lot of problems with my skin because the protection wasn't available, the sunscreens, when I was a small child. You know, for example, I went to summer camp in the Adirondacks, and of course I wanted to be like all the other kids, and we swam out in the lake at noon, and then we went canoeing at 2 o'clock, and it was very intense. It is necessary to develop the habit of using sunscreen daily. Ongoing consultation with a dermatologist is advised. Hats, UV-coated sunglasses, and tightly woven or protective clothing will also minimize the effects of the sun. Although persons with albinism can spend time outdoors and enjoy sports and other activities, they must be very careful to protect themselves from sun damage to their skin and eyes.
by and large, I believe the patient with albinism should be allowed to do as much as possible and find their own limitations rather than limitations being placed upon them beforehand. Many patients with albinism become excellent athletes, runners, skiers, people who enjoy the outdoor world and athletic activities. They discover these things on themselves and we should not limit their exploration. Probably the most difficult aspect of Cameron play soccer is that it's, it's, it's sometimes hard to follow the ball. And, uh, he, and what he typically will do is follow his friends and follow the crowd and, and, uh, and, and at points he'll happen upon the ball and when he, gets in, when he, when he finds the ball he'll, he'll kick it down the field and he has a good time. In handling Cameron's motivation, um, I think that's something that comes from him. Um, it's hard for us to you know, keep him motivated and we cheer him on and encourage him but you know, what it really comes from is, is him. Oh, I bet I know that. You're adopted, right? No, I'm not adopted. I just have albinism. Albinism? What's that? It just means that I don't have pigment in my hair, skin, and eyes. Advocacy is something a person with albinism will have to engage in for their entire life. Teaching people to understand this condition is necessary to reverse the many myths and misconceptions about it. Advocacy involves acting out of the norm. Most people do not participate in change. Um, people like things to stay they, the way they are. For those of us with disabilities, we need to go outside of the norm. We need, as is commonly said, to go outside the box, to do things that are often perceived by others to be outrageous. For example, picking up the telephone, calling your congressman, writing a letter to your congressman that you personally write, uh, not being afraid to speak up and say what's important to you, particularly as it relates to your own disability. In recent years, albinism has been portrayed in a very negative way in some movies that have been produced. And um, in response to one of those movies, uh, to which several of us had a very, very strong reaction, we put together a book uh, in protest. And we sent that book to the directors of the film uh, and to other people in the movie industry, trying to help them uh, realize the negative impact their work had done. Support groups such as the National Organization for Albinism and Hypopigmentation, or NOAA, can provide invaluable support to children, their parents, and adults with albinism. It was founded because people with albinism knew very little about albinism. There was not much available in libraries when people needed to know about their condition. Uh, it was also founded because people with albinism didn't really have a chance to meet one another. So what NOAA does is we provide a newsletter and information bulletins about various aspects of albinism. And, and we also provide conferences and chapter meetings which allow people an opportunity to get to know one another. It's really a unique experience. It's great. It's the first time I've had an opportunity to meet so many people with albinism ever in my life. One of my dreams is definitely to be in a part of this organization for the rest of my life. Coming here and going to the different NOAA conferences and, and reading in the NOAA newsletter has been great for me. I don't know how it's, you know, how it's affected you. I, I think the albinism is great. I used to think it was just a big downfall. In the discussion groups and stuff, I've gotten a lot of things off my chest that I've wanted to say for a long time. NOAA conferences allow special interest groups to meet and freely discuss their shared experiences. You know, albinism has its negative side, but it, it, learning who your friends are is the best thing, too, for everyone, so. Noah Teenagers. When I first got into high school, I didn't do much. I, I mean, I'd go to school and I'd come home and I, I really wanted to fit in. So my mother told me, if you want to be happy, join. So I joined everything. I mean, I did all this, all the extracurricular activities I could. Noah People of Color. What we intend to do is try to provide support so that those people from a black community or a Mexican community or a Asian community will feel more comfortable when they first come to NOAA because they will know that we have experienced some of the same things. The HPS network. We're here representing Hermansky Pudlock syndrome. And basically this rare form of albinism is characterized by a bleeding tendency and can involve lung disease and colitis. 
Diagnosis of this condition requires special testing of the platelets under an electron microscope. People with albinism lead rich, meaningful lives with successful careers and loving relationships. I own a balloon decorating company and uh, we do large-scale decorations and small, simple bouquets. I'm a family practice physician. I work in downtown Minneapolis. I'm a teacher at the School for the Blind and I'm also a marriage, family and child counselor and I lead support groups. I do, I'm a website designer and an internet consultant. I'm very entrenched in advanced technology. I'm a computer systems designer. I've been in computers for about 22 years in my life. I am the coordinator of Disabled Student Services at Chicago State University. I'm a uh, elementary school teacher. I also uh, function as a mentor teacher. I work for the New York City Department of Social Service. I am a claims reviewer for the department. I make my living as a musician, a filmmaker, and a software engineer. We face the challenge of growing up, making friends, getting places, accepting ourselves, honoring our color, reaching out, living life to its fullest. Together, we face the challenge.